final episode of season one, Vinland Saga. I feel like Aslet has come to a very important realization. I'm so excited to see what he comes up with. Do not give this man money. <laughs> He's going to use it against you. Should have never given this man silver. <laughs> I love how he's just prodding him. Just poking him. Poking at him. Ooh, was that a mistake from the king? Letting Aslad know that he knows. Here we go. The, the opening moves of this chess game. And everyone's watching. Questioning the king in front of a room full of people. Ooh, how did Aslad become so dear to my heart? <laughs> Despite all the insane things that have happened in this show. He's just the man, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Which is partly why I think it would be so satisfying if, like, he became the hero that he's been waiting for, you know? Episode 24, end of the prologue. This is... This is all just the prologue, this is all just set up. Yeah, it's a bold move. Ask that is a bold man. Okay, interesting tactic. Uh, he is very good at talking, and he's very good at reading people. <laughs> Gambling pays off once again. But neither of them are stupid. I mean, they both know the deal. Whoa. Ooh, damn. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. He's figured it out. Asklad's not the only one good at reading people. Just get on, Thorfinn. Get on and never look back. But he can't. I mean, the answer for Thorfinn is clearly not killing uh, Asklad. Still, it feels like his destiny is with him. There are two grand of scale on the world stage. It's too significant for him to just walk away. He's not ready for Iroh's tea shop yet. He still has a legacy to complete. There goes your freedom. Gone. Just for a moment, he could taste it. It was never going to go down that way. Sorry, Leaf. That was such a beautiful shot of Thorfinn, you know? Like, there's his chance to get away from this terrible life. But for reasons I can't explain, it's clear that that's not a solution either. There's something that Thorfinn needs to learn from Asklad. And so his leaving isn't freedom either. It's just plunging further into ignorance or allowing the same sort of ignorance to persist. Freedom isn't home, you know, it's not safety. It's not necessarily comfort. Maybe it's something more like true expression. Freedom is being as big as possible, you know, as being as expansive as possible, being the most Possible. I think even Asked that has referred to that, you know, unless he can learn to incorporate what the world is with what he is and achieve a certain level of mastery, he's always going to be weak and easily defeated. This burning desire inside of him is a ticket to his destiny. And it's not the action itself, you know, it's conceivable that there would be a time or a situation where going home would be the right move, but he would know when that was and it's when he's been able to resolve whatever it is that's been driving him, you know, whatever he's running from, whatever the truth is that he can't bring himself to accept. I feel bad for Leaf though. This is not my kind of shoulder pat. Is everyone still in the room? Damn, this escalated. We all heard it. This conflict might get resolved a lot faster than I thought. I am king now. Is this the plan? Is this is just the plan? Just fight it out. This is the gamble of all gambles right now. No, that's not the answer. This is the only thing he has right now. This is insane. Lucius Artorius. Oh, he is Artorius. Damn, he has a real name. I was saying I wanted to to rise to this level. And somebody somebody threw a wine. 
horn. <gasps> oh my god, I can't believe that just happened. Did we just become king? Are we king now? <laughs> sure looks proud of himself. <laughs> I'm stunned. I'm speechless. May as well put on the crown while you're at it. Put on Canute or someone. I mean, we don't gotta worry about the guards. We got Dorkel. We're good. If this is a chess game, that that was like the... What do you call that? That three move, four move checkmate. Uh, are you okay, Canute? That was your father? Oh, he's not okay. I think you're missing the opportunity here, Canute. Thorfinn is, might just show up just in time. Weird to think that he might be Aslat's only friend right now. Greatest friend. That's just Aslat holding it down by himself. As he does. He looks different now. Like, he's, like, happy. Is his purpose? He's on fire right now. He's just on fire. He's just out-purposing all of you right now. I'm wondering how Thorkel will react. I think Thorkel will ally with Aspect too. He seems to be MIA right now, though. He was holding back that last battle. He was holding back. Are they fleeing? He is Artorius. He just looks like Artorius. Oh, is Kanu just putting out an appearance? No, he's crystal clear. Is he sacrificing himself? Well, he gets a taste of glory, at least. For one moment, he gets to be Artorius. For one battle. Time for a pork chop. He knows exactly what he did. Damn. What are you doing? I don't want him to interfere. <gasps> no! No! Thorfinn's... Yes, absolutely. He could survive that. Or, 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 or not, or not. Well, Thorfinn's gonna have to find a new purpose real quick. Speaking of which... This is your legend that you're building. This is engineered by, by Asklad. This is a terrifying moment for Thorfinn. This is a horrifying moment for Thorfinn. He knew what he was doing. He knew exactly what he was doing. <laughs> this is repeated history for Thorfinn, too. This is like the second time. Yeah, there's something about Asla that made him feel invincible, but I mean, I guess he chose his own death. Still haven't learned. And the words don't match what he's feeling at all. It's clear. He does care about Thorfinn. You need to, and everyone can see that. Again, another bird flying over the ocean. This time it feels different. Yes. I can't believe that happened. I can't believe Athlet is gone. And it's also so amazing that in his final moments, he gives Thorfinn that gift. And maybe Thorfinn is finally ready to hear it. I did not expect that at all. I expected a long, drawn-out, strategical conflict between Aslet and the King. But now that I've seen it, I can't really imagine a better ending for him. This is not me comparing the characters at all, because they're very, very different characters. But there's something very Erwin Smith-like about this resolution, in the sense that, just for a moment, they completed their arc. They closed their arc and became the fully realized version of what they themselves were dreaming for, but didn't feel was possible. There was a great monologue Aslet gave where he said he was not the hero, and couldn't be the hero because of what he's done. And there's something to that, right? But just for a moment, 
just for a moment, he got to be Artorius, the hero that he'd been waiting for his entire life. He did it himself. So it's one of those things where, I mean, this is not as tragic to me as Erwin, just because, you know, Asgard was sort of a bad dude, but where it's a it's a death, but in the most glorious way possible. It ends up being a triumph for his character. It's such an amazing depiction, you know, it's such an amazing way they set this up for him to have this very clear image of what greatness was, what perfection was. Being a hero that rises up for the country, a hero that everyone's been waiting for for centuries, everyone looking around wondering who it's going to be. There's such a clear image of that, and then Aslet becomes that. Is there a little bit of delusion in it? Probably. You know, is he actually this great king of Wales? No. But it sort of doesn't matter, because the, the magic of it is not actually in the circumstance of it, but in his own meeting of his greatest self, the claiming of that perfect vision. And so he he won, you know, he wins, despite the fact that he died, as, as weird as that is to think about. But then also, in circumstance, he happens to do it as well, or, or it seems that way. You know, he seems to have just sa saved Wales from this invasion and fulfilled his promise to Canute. And in his last moments, doing a really great service to Thorfinn, someone to whom he owes, owes a tremendous debt. In one scene, Aslad just becomes this complete story in such a beautiful way. It's, it's uh, unbelievably amazing. I can't remember where it was, but I recently heard someone say that hell is you yourself now meeting the self you could have been and all the pain existing in that gap. If there's something to that, maybe the opposite is something like heaven. I don't know. Just some ideal state is you meeting your ideal version of yourself and realizing they're exactly the same. It's kind of a, a cool thought to me because it allows for variance and differences from person to person. It's an individual journey. It also feels like something more concrete than usual to aspire to because while it's definitely difficult to be an ideal version of yourself, pretty much everyone can come up with something like an ideal vision of themselves, even if it takes tinkering and adaptation over time as you learn more. At the very least, there's always a point to move towards. And maybe that's the goal, you know, maybe that's part of the objective meaning of life. You know, it's subjective in the sense that it varies from person to person, but objective in the sense that that is accessible on some level to everyone and makes sense. Like it, it makes so much sense to me and is so clear when I see it in media. And I think that's why these individual character journeys like Aslads are are so meaning and inspiring. And get this sword out of his hand. What a day! Just another episode of Vinland Saga where nothing happens. That is a look of sheer horror. That's right, just some hair. He just lost some hair. I mean, that's also a tragedy because of how beautiful his hair is, but. Oh, we give him a scar. He'll look a little bit more battle legit now. I'm sort of upset that this guy's still alive. He's probably the only character I really don't like. He just never does anything good or admirable. He took the crown. So much for the brother. We just got a, a lot more tools in our disposal to make this perfect paradise on Earth. How's Thorkel doing? How you doing, Thorkel? Just mildly peeved about the whole thing. What a mix of emotions. He dropped the knife. The one he picked up as a kid. This feels bigger than just the slip of the fingers. It's been such a crazy season, I can't even believe it, how much has happened. Speaking of freedom, I don't know what Thorfinn will do now. But something is... Something has just been freed in a big way, with Aslod's death. Confused about who that was. It looked like Thorfinn, but he had red hair. Damn! What an ending to an amazing season. I can't believe it. <laughs> it's so funny, like, the whole time I was trying to guess, or I was commenting on, like, oh, this is this was just the prologue. Everything before this was just the prologue. And then it turns out that, no, the, this, this is all just the prologue. <laughs> season 1 is just a prologue. But if this is a prologue, it's the best prologue of all time. It's been pretty fun to observe on myself how much the show has grown on me from the first episode. I definitely was not prepared. I had no idea how much it was going to be, and how epic the characters were going to be, and their underlying philosophies. What the stakes were going to be. We went from, you know, small time villages and mercenaries to kingdoms in the span of 24 episodes but it was so much more than that you know it's so much more than the country politics and the battles it's about a handful of people with an imperfect vision but a vision nonetheless of what needs to happen in the world and what's lacking the heroism vacuum that they feel and their individual attempts to to step towards it and we got a full one in Aslan. we got a, sort of a full arc did he solve the world's problems no but for a fleeting moment he became the hero that he'd been waiting for his entire life he answered his own call well i know there's still a lot more to come 
and I'm sure it'll be amazing. I really appreciate the fact that even just taken as one season, it works as a complete story. We got something like a resolution with Canute becoming king, Aslad becoming Aslad, Thorfinn being freed, although there's probably a little bit more to that that we still need to see. Thorkel enjoying his pork chops, while simultaneously there being a lot more to go. There's a lot more ground to travel because we still have this glowing idol, this, this beautiful image of Thor's that's lurking in every episode, even after his death, that is the show's answer, I feel, to the, the questions posed by the characters that they are all struggling to catch up to. And so I suspect all the characters will have their arcs and will have, you know, full stories. One of them, maybe even Thorfinn, will have the ultimate one, you know, the highest one, where they're not just a king, but like a king of kings. I really liked the series throughout. I mean, it was enjoyable from the first episode, but it just kept picking up speed, kept picking up steam, and it never slowed down all the way through the finale. It's just really amazing. Thrilling stuff. Characters are great in their individual perspectives and the questions they pose. It's challenging. The story itself, like the plot, always kept me on my toes, always kept me guessing. I really had no idea where it was going. And also had, had the, I think, rare quality of giving me more than I wanted. Each time I thought I had the ending figured out or the next sequence of events figured out, it was better than that. You know, like, for example, they'll pit two sides against each other and I'm predicting this one to win. And instead of that, they join forces and take on the king, you know, that kind of thing. And here I was expecting a longer drawn out battle between Asclad and the king of the Danes. Asclad just seizing the moment, being the ultimate badass that he is, winning everything in one shot. Thinking about it now, it, it's extra great how there's a, a turn for Aslan at the end, where we've seen him up to now being able to sacrifice anything for his his goals. The final thing he sacrificed was himself, which, you know, even though they're also very different people, not unlike Thor's in that one aspect. I wonder if Thor's wasn't uh, an influence in some small way. Aslan ends up saving a lot of people with his sacrifice, most likely. He just prevented a whole fruitless war. Speaking of circumstance, you never really know, right? Because now Canute has power and Canute is, is going to create this paradise on Earth, which for me feels like destined villainy. But it also sort of doesn't really matter looking at it from Aslan's perspective because he made a sacrifice for what he thought was good and was willing to put his life aside for the sake of other people, for his people in Wales. It seems like there was a bit of a time skip for that flash and so we may get a fully adult Thorfinn going into season two. I don't really care what it is, if it's half as good as this in terms of its character development and its philosophy, its themes, its raw power and beauty, it's action. It's gonna be a fun ride. So thank you guys for watching season one of Villain Saga. It like flew by, honestly. Let me know if you'd like to see a QA. and a I'm, I'm not sure if I should do one just because it's only been one season and there's more to come. It might make sense to do a longer one later when I have more, more context on the show. But then again, this did feel like a full story in its own right. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you everyone for following. Thank you to all patrons for the support and for making these videos possible. Love you guys and see you very soon for a whole series of shows. Like a lot of shows coming. <laughs>